Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy Saturday. So in today's video, we got a really fun episode for you guys. We're going to be talking about how to build a chatbot that is backed by customized question and answer pair from clinical trial data that I scraped from Wikipedia. So that sounds mouthful, right? Apologize for the long name. I actually don't really know what to call it, but that's essentially what it does. So. With that being said, let's dive right in. Let's start asking a couple of questions regarding clinical trial. First things first, we could probably ask, what is the purpose of clinical trials? And you say, ask me anything. And boom, there you go. Here we have an AI doctor that says the purpose of clinical trials is to evaluate the safety and efficacy of new medical treatment devices or procedures. And of course, there's more detailed answers follow up. And that's essentially what this user interface look like. And then, of course, we can ask a different question. What are different types of clinical trials? And then let's ask AI doctor. And boom, there you go. So it says there are different types of clinical trials, including one, treatment trials, to test an experimental treatment to determine its safety and efficacy. Two, prevention trials to test new approaches or methods to prevent the development of a disease. And then so on and so forth, it lists out in here a total of 10 different types of clinical trials. So that kind of gives you an idea of what this thing is doing on the front end. Now, when we're going to back end, we're going to see how to create this. First is you need the data, right? Because you don't want to just be naive about it. You don't want to just make an API call and toss a question into ChatGPT and be like, hey, fingers crossed, let's hope that ChatGPT gives us the right answer. Well, that might work, but here I really want the training data to be a little bit more customized. So the first step is to scrape Wikipedia page using certain keywords such as clinical, medical, clinical trials, so on and so forth. And once you scrape those keywords, you're gonna use that document to create question answer pair. So with that being said, let's dive in. So I have this notebook here that's directly taken from OpenAI website. It shows you how to scrape certain pages from Wikipedia. Now, of course, not all of it. So let's take a look at these functions. So here we have a filter title function and in that filter title function, uh, it essentially allows you to enter a certain title, but it needs to follow certain keywords. Uh, for example, here I just said clinical, I say trials, I say medical, and that's all I said, just three keywords. And we have this get wiki page function uh, to literally trying to get that page based on that title. Uh, of course, uh, you're gonna handle exceptions because it's not likely that every single word that you made up uh, could have a Wikipedia page. So make sure that you handle your exceptions. Once that's done, you're gonna have to recursively find all the images. So here you can probably have this for loop uh, to trying to essentially search not just that particular page based on the keywords, but also all of the sub pages. And then the sub pages inside of those sub pages, and then you append them together. So after this function, it essentially gives you a giant corpus of texts. Uh, they're essentially paragraphs from Wikipedia pages that's related to the main page using your keywords, clinical, trial, medicals. Now, if you guys want to play around, feel free to take the code and change to your own keywords and see what pops up. So for the sake of this exercise, I just use these three keywords as an example. So once you run this function, you're going to see these lists of names popping out. Uh, they could be clinical trials, there's one page related to that. They could be medical procedure, pre-existing medical conditions, medical diagnosis, and so on and so forth. I'm not gonna try to read all of them, I'm not gonna try to pretend I understand all of them, but this is essentially what comes up from those search of the Wikipedia pages based on your keywords. So once we have that corpus, let's save it, right? So how do I do that? Well, in this case, I want to try to avoid having a long chunk of texts. 
because that may or may not blow up my quotas, right? So particularly we use NLTK tokenize library uh, to essentially come up with these two functions to try to limit the length of tokens to a fixed length. Exactly what that number is, of course, depends on your own desirability of your app. And then next thing come up, I have this helper function here trying to extract the sections. So what that means is you want to handle the headings, the subheadings, the captions, and the pictures, whatever junk that may show up on those chunk of strings that you just scraped from Wikipedia, right? You want to get rid of those. And you just want to have the pure text in front of you extracted from the output of the Wikipedia page that you just scraped. And then there you go. After you've done that, you run the code, it will give you these small bite size of texts and only text, right? There's no weird symbols, there's no pictures, headings, none of that stuff, just pure texts. And then the last thing is that you wanna save it somewhere. So we use our pandas library, create this data frame, and you just wanna pair it up with the content, the tokens, and the headings, the titles, so that it's informative. So you can use a quick for loop, extract all those sections, and basically append all those information row by row onto this panda data frame. And there you go. I didn't want to go crazy on it, so I just did 80 of them and then save it to your CSV file. So let's take a look at the CSV file. So this is what a CSV file looks like. Uh, first column, you have title, clinical trial. That's what it says. And then you have headings. Of course, you have different sections of headings, different parts of the contents based on the heading, based on the title. And then you can create that question. And that takes us to the second notebook. So this is the second notebook. We start with reading the data. This is a CSV that we just created from the first notebook. And that's kind of what it looks like. As you can see right now, there isn't really a question answer pair right there. Not yet. And we're going to create that. So what you're going to do is you use OpenAI. And we're going to be starting making some API calls. So there we go. That's essentially the main functionality that I use to create that question answer pair. So we know that we have the paragraphs, right? We extracted from the Wikipedia pages. Now we need to create questions. So how it works is you need to have this helper function called get question. And this get question needs to make an API call uh, from OpenAI. And the function that we're calling is OpenAI completion. So here, look at this prompt write questions based on the text below. And the text is whatever it is that you enter. So now that makes things interesting, right? We are using ChatGPT to take a chunk of text and ask ChatGPT to create a question based on that text. So it's kind of like a reverse relationship, right? We're not asking a question and have it provide an answer. The things that we ask is actually to ask ChatGPT to provide a question. So I thought that's an interesting design, and that's the first function that you have to write. And then from there, you kind of get the idea, right? After you run this function, of course, you can have a new column. That's a list of questions based on the text that you just scraped from the Wikipedia pages. And then from here, some of you probably already guessed, right? If you can make an API call to create questions, why not make an API call to create answers? And that's exactly right. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So here, we have another helper function called getAnswer. The getAnswer helper function is going to make another API call to allow the ChatGPT to accept this prompt, and we're going to give a specific instruction set, write the answer down based on this prompt. And ChatGPT is going to take that question as an input and write down what it believes is a correct answer. And not only that, it's going to write down the answer based on the context. Now that's an important piece, right? We're not just having ChatGPT produce something from the model that it's originally trained. We're asking ChatGPT to provide the answer, not just based on the question, but also based on the context that you just scraped from Wikipedia. So that creates that new information here. If you are scraping something from your own personal data that ChatGPT has not yet seen before, that's the new information. And that's what's helpful and making this a customizable pipeline. So there you go. Once you run that function, you're going to see, ah, you have all these answers listed in pair with the question. 
And obviously after that is to just save it. And there you go. You have your question answer pair. So the last part, we need to front with the UI, right? You have your question answer pair. You know what the correct answer is based on the text that you just scraped. If it's your own personal data, of course, it's a personal data that hopefully you already revealed it and you know that the answer is correct. And based on this QA pair spreadsheet, the answer is already saved it and they are correct. They're proved by human experts and that's the new information that the original version of ChatGPT did not have. So once you have this QA pair, now the rest of the job is easy. You want to front it with some sort of web-based application and we're going to use our same pipeline, Shiny app, to front it. And we're going to create this little input-output box to back it up with a ChatGPT. And we're not going to use any ChatGPT. We're going to use a ChatGPT that's specifically created to finish the conversation. So let's dive in. So this is the major component of that function that I use to back up that front end of that web-based application that you guys just see in the beginning. This function is called get completion from messages. And the key thing here is that this messages need to take a certain fixed format. It can't just be any messages. So the API that we're going to call is OpenAI chat completion. In other words, you have to actually provide a history of conversation. And this model is specifically built to try to finish what AI believe that conversation is. Now, of course, there's a history. So you got to provide a list of something. That's kind of the relationship here, uh, why this message as an input argument requires a list. So this list doesn't fall from sky, right? We need to create that list. And you probably already guessed, well, how do we create that? We have the question and answer pair created and saved in that CSV file. We just need a helper function to extract those rows, columns of information, the question and answer pair, and save that into a list. So, which is why we also have this second helper function called a convert to list of dictionary. And that's going to take a panda data frame as input, and it's going to output a list of dictionaries. So let's take a look. It's going to iterate each row of that panda data frame, and then it's going to create a question and answer. When you create a question and answer, make sure that the dictionary is created using this format. So what format are we talking about? First, you need to specify the key is row. And this is a hard code. ChatGPT, the OpenAI API does not take any other input as keys. The first one has to be called row. You provide a value for the key user. And then the second one has to be content. And you provide your question for that content. And there you go. That's going to be the dictionary for the question. After that, you do the same thing for the answer. And there you go. You have your question answer pair. Once you have your question answer pair, you append it to that empty list that you initialized in the beginning as a placeholder. So once this function finish, we're going to go to the entire spreadsheet and save all those information in a fixed format as dictionaries inside of this list called result. And in the end, we'll return that result. And that gives us the correct format of messages. And that messages is going to be what we use to throw into this API function. And based on that, you can return the final answer, which is what ChatGPT believes is the next sentence of this conversation based on everything that you fill in in the beginning. So that's essentially the back end and how the function works in relation with the customizable QA pair and the ChatGPT API call. Now let's take a look at the final step, which is the front end. So here I have a new navigation bar built up on the old app, and then it's simply called clinical trial chatbot. In this chatbot, I need a sidebar panel and a main panel. Sidebar panel is what that button sits in. So user enter something, they click a button, right? The button needs to sit somewhere. That's where the button sits. And then in the main panel, very simple, two rows. First row is something that allows the user to enter. 
So it's going to be input text box. The second row is going to be what the AI outputs. So the AI doctor outputs something, right? That presentation is displayed back on the screen that needs to sit somewhere. And that's precisely what the second row is doing. And boom, there you go. That's your UI. That's the front end. It's as simple as that. So hook it up, get it deployed, and there you go. You have this app in front of you. To specifically check that if the question answer pair is related to this answer and if ChatGPT actually took those things into consideration, let's do a, a little bit of a trivial checkout. Let's find a question from that spreadsheet and see if the answer that this ChatGPT provides is same as the original answer. Right? Let's take a look at that comparison. So let's go to our spreadsheet. I don't really know what questions you guys are interested in, so I'm just going to pick a random one. Let's say this one. What is an active comparator? I actually don't know what that is, right? So that could be a question that people ask. And let's take a look at the answer. An active comparator is a previously approved treatment with known effectiveness. Okay? That's the answer. That's the answer that you just scraped from Wikipedia. So. Let's enter the question into the chatbot and let's see what it produce. So there you go, that's the answer. Let's take a look. An active comparator is a type of control group used in clinical trials. In an active comparator trial, the experimental treatment is compared to a previously approved treatment with known effectiveness. The purpose of using an active comparator is to determine if the experimental treatment being studied is more effective than the current standard treatment. By using an active comparator, it is possible to determine whether the experimental treatment is truly better than the existing treatment or whether it is simply equivalent to the existing treatment. So in other words, let's put them side by side. You can kind of see that it's not just taking this answer and then remember it and then print it back on screen. It's kind of like taking that as an idea and then elaborate a little bit, right? So if I may, I can put them probably side by side. You guys will probably see it better. There you go, right? So that's the comparison. On the left-hand side, we have just one sentence. It's probably not a whole lot of information, uh, but it did convey the message. On the right-hand side, so it's a little bit more elaboration, right? So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope this episode gives you the idea to provide you that pipeline of building this user-friendly application that can literally base on any corpus, any text that you want to input. So there you go. If you like the video, give a like and hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.